<laughs> I know I am. Let's throw it over to Crank Dud. Take it away. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Crank Dud, and with me on the couch, we have Mythical Nine. Hi. And this is Mega Man Zero Two. And uh, if you've seen this run in other marathons before, this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be in the hard mode. And there's pretty much three things you need to know. The first thing is everything deals double damage to me, so I'm going to be taking tons of damage probably. The uh, second thing is I'm using protoform throughout the entire run. That means all my weapons are at level one, so I don't get any like uh, saber combos, charge saber, and not even a charge buster. Pretty limited in that regard. And the third thing is the one upside is I deal an incredible extra one point of damage for all my attacks, so it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so let's get started in uh, three, two, one, go. All right, so right off the bat, we've got this intro stage. We've got uh, limited weapon selection, just the buster and saber right now. Uh, two shots there with the sword will take out those totem pole enemies. And right away, uh, we're dealing with uh, these golem mini boss enemies. He's already reached it here. Uh, we're going to be seeing him taking damage on purpose to land this next hit right here inside the hitbox. Uh, extended uh, jump slash by holding down uh, while attacking, you deal just an extra little bit of damage, and uh, that can uh, be a break point in some cases. We get another golem here with a, a similar setup, but there's a hole in the ground that can screw you up a little bit. But he's good, and uh, things are going pretty good for Crank Dead right now. There is a health refill. You're going to see him in that uh, grabbing his arm weak animation quite a bit uh, because you just take so much damage in this game, and it is a hard game. You know, Not only is he playing on hard mode, but the game itself is actually very, very difficult. So. Uh, it's, uh, you know, even the, the world record has uh, at least a death or two. Uh, if, uh, it would be fantastic if we had the deathless run. Of course, there's me with the jinx early on as we get ready for the uh, first boss coming in here. We're going to be looking to land hits on the head. Uh, a couple different patterns. We're looking to avoid the uh, scorpion tail uh, drilling in some holes here. And uh, you need to be careful. You can't be too aggressive or that shield will just swing in and grab you. So uh, after taking that hit, he's going to need to be a little bit defensive. One more hit to finish it off. Yeah, the nice and safe. I like it. So the Mega Man Zero series, you can see uh, you get a ranking here at the end of the stage. Uh, they really layer on a lot of mechanics on top of your traditional uh, Mega Man game. So uh, you get points for uh, defeating enemies, not using certain things. Uh, and uh, we don't care about any of it, really, because uh, we are trying actually to avoid having a high ranking. Defeating certain bosses with an A or an S rank uh, will usually earn you uh, a new cool technique, uh, but not on hard mode. And also, those bosses will respond with their own uh, special attacks during those fights. So. Uh, we did get uh, just a B rank there. That's good. Uh, we don't have to worry about that going forward. So, uh, we are playing on the Japanese version due to uh, some unique glitches. So uh, the story, the wonderful story, uh, is going to go over our heads a little bit here uh, with the Japanese. This is El Pizzo, and uh, I, I think he's the one in command because he has the best hair. It's the longest with the curliest, the most gold. Uh, so that puts him at top. We're going to see uh, CL in a little bit with her long blonde hair. Uh, also a high-ranking figure. And uh, of course, when Zero shows up with that, that lovely long blonde hair, uh, immediately receives a high position uh, in, the, uh, in the ranks and will be uh, put to work on some missions. But uh, these opening cutscenes are going to go on for a little bit, so this is actually a good time for some more donations if you do have some more. I definitely do. I've got $25 from PurpleBoy93. Hello, Randy here. I thought I should donate here for this awesome event. Good luck on the run, Crank Dude. Keep rocking. You? <laughs> crank, crank Dude, that'll work. <laughs> I've been called many things. So. <laughs> it's all the my dudes, you know. <laughs> we have $15 from Tofu and Dave. Another donation because we will never not be ready for Mega Man Zero. Let's go, Crank Dud. We believe in you. Thank you. We've got $5.55 from Decoy Blimp, hyped for the Mega Man Zero Two run. Put this bid towards my dude. We've got $25 from Silver Moon 9000. Let's mega that man, Zero. This goes to Castlevania Three. Thank you. Let's do one more. All right, we've got $5 from Louise Runner Guitar. Hey, AGDQ, very recent watcher, thanks to my lovely girlfriend, Katya. So happy to be watching Mega Man Zero, to be or not to be. All right, so we've regained control here, but the uh, it'll be a little while still before we get back into it, but uh, 
We're going to go ahead and uh, talk to El Piso, get some instructions here. Uh, we're also going to get our weapons that we didn't have access to in the intro stage. Uh, the chain rod will be used for some pretty cool stuff. It's, it's basically a grappling hook, uh, just kind of further deepening the, the gameplay in this game. Uh, add a grapple, and uh, a speedrunner will go nuts with it. And we'll see that a little bit here. Here we are picking up our weapons. We're also going to grab the shield. And the shield is, uh, you know, is defensive like a shield, but also our best offensive tool. Uh, we're going to be counting on that for damage, because uh, we're not going to be able to level up our buster or our saber. Uh, and those are kind of your main sources of damage, the saber in particular in the normal run. But without being able to level them up, uh, they're really not good options for dealing damage to bosses. So uh, the charge shield is what we're going to be doing. Uh, you throw it in a, a boomerang pattern, and there's some really fun stuff you can do with dodging it and uh, keeping it uh, active, doing loops and stuff. So um, it really is key to uh, getting damage on this hard mode run. And uh, it's not easy to do. So. Um, that, uh, that is sort of the main challenge. It's something that uh, Crankdead was responsible for uh, kind of routing in a lot of ways, coming up with the, the techniques to, uh, to use the shield in a lot of creative ways to get a lot of hits out of it. Looks like finally we're going to be able to uh, accept our first mission. Uh, our first destination is going to be Panther Flow Claws. Uh, fantastic boss names in the Mega Man Zero series. Uh, a panther named Panther, and then uh, Flow Claws is just a, a work of art. Um, but uh, this is, uh, he's on a train, and uh, we're here to sort of uh, take shipment away uh, from, uh, from, from Neo Arcadia, who we're, or our rebel force is kind of fighting against. So uh, we're basically trying to rob this train. Um, but in terms of speedrunning, it is a very difficult stage. You need to kind of find a rhythm to dodge these enemies. And we're also manipulating RNG, or at least we're going to try to. It is incredibly difficult to maintain an RNG manipulation throughout the entire stage. Lots of little things can totally throw it off. And uh, it uh, you know, means that you need to be able to read and react to a lot of different boss patterns. So far, Crank Dud's doing uh, a really good job. This yellow thing in the background that comes by every now and then right here is actually will hit you. You need to be jumping over that. And it's uh, coming in pretty, uh, pretty often and uh, pretty annoying to deal with. But all right, here's, here's our shipment. We came here to steal this stuff. We're all ready. They're trying to take it back. Crank Dud, get him. Get him. Don't let him. They're getting, they're getting away, Crank Dud. Oh, he's trying so hard, but it's just not working. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter in the hard mode speed run. This will uh, earn your ranking. It's also a really good uh, opportunity to build up uh, Saber experience. Uh, but uh, we don't do either of those things in the hard mode speed run, and it's faster to uh, let them all get away. So uh, you will find that uh, Zero is largely irresponsible in the hard mode speed run. We're going to grab this little uh, thing in here. That is a Cyber Elf. Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, it's a really useful item. Trying to get a dash there with the shield. You cannot dash with the shield, but if you dash and jump at the same frame, uh, you do get that little dash there. And we'll talk about what the heck a Cyber Elf is in a little bit. But first, we've got this Panther Flow Claws Flight. He's going to be uh, uh, staying close here uh, to manipulate uh, Panther to not be doing uh, one of his more dangerous attacks that uh, is uh, a, a really big problem here. But he's not gotten hit at all, Craig. So just, that's, it. that's the curse, right? That's how that works. Uh, but he can take one more hit. And you can see here the shield will kind of arc towards where Zero is. So if you throw it too far, uh, it will go the wrong way. But he does recover from that and get the kill on the first boss here. Yes, that is applause worthy. Every boss kill on hard mode in this game is applause worthy. Uh, extremely difficult game, but uh, Crank Dud going to be making it look easy, I think. We've got a little bit of downtime again between stages. So hit me with, let's say, two donations. All right, I've got a $25 donation from Simmert. Huge fan of GDQ since 2014. Last October, I was diagnosed with a mild form of cancer, but received my last chemo three weeks ago, and now I'm in recovery. The good news is that the cancer is gone now. Good luck this year, and greetings from Amsterdam. That's great, Simmert. Thank you so much. All right, we got uh, this next boss is, is Phoenix Magnion. Phoenix Mignon. I feel like if you went to a fancy restaurant and asked for the recommendation, the waiter might recommend the Phoenix Mignon. But uh, whatever he is, he's up next. Uh, we're here because he's weak to Thunder, and we just got the Thunder chip from Panther. So uh, the reason why we did Panther first was so we could get this weakness, uh, because we want to beat this stage to get rid of some enemies that will spawn in other stages, these uh, troublesome gunner enemies. You can see these mines spawning here that uh, home in. And this is our mission objective to destroy, I think, four of these things. Crankdown showing off some of the mechanics here uh, with uh, how the shield moves. 
Um, that uh, does drop a, a Cyber Elf there to pick up. We're not interested. Damage boosting off of these, uh, the uh, mines to get invincibility frames to go off the spikes. Uh, pretty risky maneuver. You can see he's low on health. The drop there is going to help him a little bit. Learning how to, to work with the health drops is important because you will stutter for a little bit while your health refills. So uh, you do need to uh, be ready for all of those health drops and, uh, and make it work. Stage going pretty well so far. Uh, moving on to uh, this uh, laser section. It is possible to get through here really quickly without getting hit. Eddie does. Uh, this is, a, you know, it, it's not going to kill him, but every hit counts for so much in this game. Very important to keep your health total high, uh, especially heading into a boss fight. Luckily, there's a, a couple places where you can pick up some health refills, but they're really not too common, so uh, you got to be careful not to, not to die to a, a death of not really a thousand paper cuts. I think three paper cuts will kill you uh, in hard mode in this game. We've got one final reactor here, and now this is going to trigger the boss to show up. So Crank Dead is going to throw out the shield and uh, just to have it just do some loops, you know, just hang out, just orbiting. Uh, this is because this cutscene will stop you from uh, charging your shield. So if you want a shield hitbox out, inactive, and ready to hit Phoenix as soon as the battle starts, then uh, you got to do it like this. So, you know, it's a little fun. Um, fun fact, Phoenix Magnum will in advance the RNG every single frame he's on screen, so uh, trying to manipulate this fight is very tricky. This is the worst pattern here. The mirror image split is really what you don't want to see. Oh, the shield betrayed him. It was out of position for the charge there. That's a shame. So he cannot get hit by anything else in this fight. And uh, if he gets more of those uh, mirror image patterns like this one, he needs to be very careful about being defensive. He's going to throw the shield at two of them, hope it hits. If not, he's going to try to slash the others. And uh, oh, it's, it's tough. Uh, one more hit. Oh, see, if you take too long, the fire comes in. It is very hard to dodge, uh, in addition to all the other stuff going on. So uh, almost clutched it out there. We're going to do one more try recharging up this shield here. Yeah, that one is hacky did at the beginning. Um, <laughs> That is the one thing I don't want to see doing this strat right here with the shoot ring out because there's pretty much no way for me to get the shoot ring to hit him at all. Hopefully it goes better here on the second attempt. And we do get that pattern, but he does get the hit, so that's the, the good start you're looking for. You can see they kept in, uh, we are playing on the Japanese version, but even on the English version, you will see some of these lovely voice samples. The, my favorite in the whole game is probably this Muero which uh, I think means burn, but uh, hopefully Crank Dud does nothing of the sort. Nice, there it is. So we get the uh, flame chip, I think it is from uh, Phoenix. So that is going to uh, enable us to tackle enemies who are weak to fire. Our next goal is going to be uh, Polar Camris. I think is the name, the puller with an E, of all things. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna hop right into this next stage. Let's say, let's say one quick donation, maybe. All right, I've got a really quick one. We have an anonymous $500 donation with Ooh. no comment, but we appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, we're here to, I think we're doing something with computers. Even Crankta failed to explain this to me because the speedrun has no concern for, for the mission objective here. We're just here, here to do a defeat this boss and move on. Uh, there's an extra life available on this platform. I don't know, he, he was trying for it, but didn't quite get it. Um, since it's you know very easy to die, um, game over has become a concern. Uh, you, uh, if you do manage to get to a, a boss door or a checkpoint, there's not many of them, but if you have them, uh, you certainly don't want to game over once you have one. So. Uh, lives will be uh, at least a little bit of a factor. Doing the Wiggletron there, I think the origination of this term is, is due to PJ. It's a very PJ-like term, so I wouldn't be surprised. But those left-right inputs do break those uh, ice blocks there. Uh, really good job by Crank Todd. We got another mini boss from this golem here. It's going to die in one charge and a slash. Easy peasy. He did take a hit there, uh, so health is uh, going to be a concern. So trying to grab the uh, Cyber Elf lingering there. Moving on. Changing to the grapple hook because we are going to see uh, our first clip here, just really easy. Zoop. 
Um, it's very minor time savings there, but uh, there's plenty of places where you can use it to uh, save uh, varying amounts of time, like right there. Uh, and it's surprisingly easy to do on the Japanese version. All you need to do is just kind of uh, be on the wall facing the other direction. Damage boost there to get invincibility frames to jump off the spikes. Uh, yeah, and you just grapple up. Well, it's easier when you're going to the right. There are other grapples that look a lot weirder when you're trying to uh, grapple off a left-facing wall, so we'll see some of those in a little bit. For now, we've got this boss fight against Polar Cameras. And uh, thankfully, Polar Cameras uh, gets stunned by this uh, charge shield here. And this stun counts for a lot. Trying to hit this boss, uh, get through those big uh, claws. The hitbox on those claws will zone you out really good. But just playing some jump rope here is going to be able to pretty much lock down Polar Cameras. There's a bit of finesse to making sure that you get that. But uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. So that's going to earn us our uh, ice chip, and that's going to be our, uh, the, uh, well, we already killed Panther, who is weak to ice, so they only got one more stage left. Uh, it is High Leg Urobakel, uh, maybe one of the, the top tier names for, uh, for this game. Um, it is like a snake man with uh, really high legs. Go figure. Uh, the mission objective here is there are some soldiers that uh, we need to save. Uh, they're, not, they're not getting saved, man. Bad news. Zero's on the case, so... Uh, you're, you're out of luck. Um, there's one there. Look how scared he is. He needs help. Someone save this guy, because it's not going to be us. Mission start. So we're off. Uh, there's going to be some uh, annoying bee enemies that are a little random, and uh, they can be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But uh, we're going to be OK. We got the grappling hook out, because we are going to need it to uh, cross some gaps. It's a little scary. We'll see how it goes. Up into the trees, secret path here. If you uh, choose, ooh, all right, yep, we're good. And then, also good, all right. Uh, vertical climb here, any vertical climb section is uh, harder than it looks here. I think he passed up on health right there. What a, he's so confident, this crank to uh, switching to ice here. It's the weakness of this next little mini boss. You're kind of supposed to use your uh, shield, uh, chain rod to uh, pull this, this platform out and stand on it, but uh, we're gonna be sort of standing on it, just kind of <laughs> hanging out here with the wall jumps. Luring the, uh, the shield back around for a second hit. Very well done. Uh, we're going to be hoping to uh, land a, a wall jump uh, really quickly off of this uh, corner right here. Very, just need to catch the top. And uh, we're going to see a really big clip into a spike ceiling. Surprise, it's there. It will kill you instantly. Uh, this is a, a really mean place, the ceiling. The, the way you're supposed to travel through that level, um, it will uh, usually pretty much always get a new player right in the face. Uh, thankfully, Crank does anything but is already in the boss fight. Um, no elemental weakness for uh, Urobakal here, so uh, it's uh, going to be a little bit of a longer fight. Uh, he's got a lot of attacks, uh, some of which can be pretty hard to dodge. The jump is really the biggest thing, so uh, that's the thing that's, that's really going to get him. He's going to be uh, baiting out the, uh, the slash attack and the grab, the kind of uh, the arms that come out of the ground. Uh, he hasn't hit too much with the shield here, and uh, getting the damage going is pretty good, but Overall, this is going to be good. He's going to have to dodge the Slinky of Doom. Here it comes. All right, he's good. All right. That was probably the most times I've ever seen him jump. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That they, You have to be able to react to those situations in order to really do well at that game. So uh, it's, uh, it's cool, at least, that we get to see it. Um, we defeated our first uh, four set of bosses. The astral projection of, of Mega Man X shows up to... Uh, to drop some knowledge about elves, there's a dark elf. Uh, it's a it's a little it's a little weird and a little unclear for now. Uh, we're gonna head back to base. They're gonna tell us to rest. That's our cue to talk to uh, CL to kind of uh, advance things. But once again, we've got a couple of cutscenes here, so I'm gonna throw it over to Yellow Killer B to do some donations. Thank you so much. We do have a $25 from donation from Kiribon. Good luck on the run, Crank Dud, and watch out for Burble. <laughs> He's known for giving uh, giving heck a lot to people who try to play the game fast. Shoutouts to everyone's boy in the Zero community, Glacier Le Kechtank, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year while being under control of Dr. Whale. So sad. We saw an uh, unconventional way to leave CL's room there. Uh, that's a, a leftward facing clip, the, uh, the grappling mechanics. I don't, I, I don't quite understand how it works, but it will let you zip vertically quite far through certain ceilings uh, like we just saw here. 
Uh, so what's happening here now is uh, El Pizzo is confident. You know, we've done all these missions. We've defeated four of these uh, ridiculous uh, robot... They're not robot masters in this game, but they're not Mavericks either. I'm not sure what this uh, cast of villains is called. In, in these, but uh, we have defeated four of them. And um, that means El Pizzo is, is confident in his position. He's going to launch an attack on uh, Neo Arcadia, the, the city that uh, we're sort of uh, fighting against. CL disagrees. CL believes that through the power of science and solving uh, sort of uh, an energy crisis that uh, she can, um, you know, put a, a peaceful stop to things. Um, but uh, Alpizo doesn't listen. He takes off, so they ask Zero to take off after him and, uh, I don't know, keep him safe, bring him home. It's a little unclear, but uh, Zero's out there, and he's not so trustworthy, so I feel like this is probably a mistake. Um, but, uh, but here we are. Uh, the boss of this level is, uh, we're going to see the, a revisit of, of some of these golem enemies, that we're going to see some new elemental varieties of them. Um, but until then, this is just a really fun stage to speedrun. There's a lot of enemies that are uh, lined up in, in ways that uh, let you just clear them like we're seeing there. And uh, then other than that, it is a, a pretty short and sweet stage as well. It goes by so quickly when you do it well, like Crankdud is doing right now. I'm waiting for it. Uh, yeah, I didn't jinx it. He got all the way through. That was a really, really clean stage there, heading into some of these boss fights. It's important to keep your health up. We're going to take a damage boost against the Ice Golem, the last of the trio. Uh, so if you, uh, if you don't have that hit, then you, you need to do some stuff. He does take one hit here. This is pretty common. The hitboxes on these golems are really weird. Uh, he gets the uh, second slash there. He's looking for two shield throws and two slashes with the sword to take down each of these. Uh, of course, they're elemental uh, affinity golems, so we're going to apply the correct elemental weakness. Uh, fire beating ice makes sense to me. I don't know about electricity beating fire, but here we are. Uh, one more slash and then one more throw. Fire golem kind of kind of the easiest of the bunch here. Um, ice is coming up next. Uh, we're hoping to see the, uh, the icicle pattern, um, and that's going to give us all the time in the world after we've uh, snuck behind the ice golem to, uh, to do all the damage we need to finish them off. And we get the snowball, so we're going to have to... He just barely got away. He needs one more slash, but we're going to play it safe and charge the shield. There it is. All right, so that's going to end that level. Uh, we're going to get our ranking, but then we're not going to teleport back to base just yet. Um, this is where the in-game timer will actually pause. There's a couple weird indiscrepancies that uh, cause the community to uh, measure by real time instead of in-game time, and it's because of like se sequences like this. But we show up, and uh, things didn't quite work out for El Pizzo this a uh, crazy cast of characters here who who looked way too awesome for them to not reappear as bosses in a little bit. Uh, they've, uh, they've put a stop to him, and they announced that a bomb is heading for uh, our base. So we need, to, uh, we need to get back and take care of that. So um, we are going to pull out here and, uh, and save poor El Pizzo, who's been knocked out. We're also getting uh, just, a, it's just a, bit of, uh, a bit of smack talk from, from the, the green guy here, uh, Sage Harpuya. Um, but I, li <laughs> I like when El Pizzo teleports in here. It's not very graceful. Blah. Uh, but here we are. He's safe. Uh, CL is uh, a science technician wizard. Uh, she can disarm this bomb. So she says, I need to come along. Zero says, all right, hold on. We have magical teleporting technology. Uh, I'll give you coordinates, and you can teleport in for a little bit. But until then, he's going to take off. Uh, into the skies for some of the, the one of the best tracks I think in the game. Pretty good music, you know. The GBA sound chip doesn't quite do it justice, but uh, Crankdown mashed really hard through that cutscene because these ships are moving on cycles even during that cutscene, and uh, they move quite a bit. You, there are certain jumps that are just completely impossible unless you wait for the the, uh, the ships to line up. He's also using the shield to bounce some of these uh, bullets back. We haven't seen the shield be used as a shield too much, but gets good use there. Barely dropped down, but did manage to hold on. Very good job. We're going to have a little bit of a mini boss fight here, though it's not too much of a mini boss fight. This is something that happens in a, a couple zero games, uh, but overlapping damage hitboxes between the uh, sword and the, the shield uh, just does a massive amount of damage and just completely destroys that mini boss. So, uh, already over and done with. Moving on to the stage, uh, we're going to be deactivating some lasers, hitting some of these switches here. And uh, this is pretty tricky. You need to move fast in order to uh, keep, uh, you know, get to the next switch before it becomes covered in lasers as well. And uh, the lasers do not quite all your health, but, but damn near close. So uh, they really, really cannot be hit. 
does manage to just tag that one from below with the Saber and then barely get down here to hit this one. Needs to keep moving really quickly. Damage boost off of that guy. And uh, yeah, this stage is going really well. Health refill is an option here, but Crankton, look at him. He's passing it up. He's confident. That's because he is about to enter a 90-second forced wait sequence. Um, and uh, it's not so easy. So this is uh, where CL is going to uh, deactivate the bomb. She teleports in, and we need to protect her. Uh, a bunch of enemies are going to be spawning in. And uh, Crankdad will hopefully make this look really dumb and boring. But uh, you can see there's a, a couple different spots where these guys can teleport in. And if you let one live, it's going to start spinning and shooting. It's going to spawn one of those little green guys. And things can get out of hand pretty quick. But if you can stay on top of things, be mindful of where they're going to spawn and get to them in time, you can uh, really, really do exactly what you're seeing uh, Crankta do here. So I'm going to count on everything going fine. crankta has got his health and everything. Uh, so let's do some donations for this uh, remaining 60 seconds. All right. We have a donation from Glenn Takahashi230. He, he doesn't leave a comment, but he leaves a $500 donation. So thank you so much, Glenn. We also have a $128 donation from Sam164. First donation of the marathon, planning on donating during whatever runs I catch. MMZ2 is a great game, but even not in hard mode, it was too hard for me as a kid. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sam. We have a $10 donation from Lucy159. Hi, everyone, and great job on the run so far. I love all the time and effort you all put in on this amazing event. Shout out to my boyfriend, Alex, who got me into GDQ. I love you lots. Thanks, Lucy. All right, 20 seconds left. Crank dud. Uh, things got a little hairy, but uh, lots of health refills drop from these enemies. So uh, even if things uh, do get that way, you can usually recover pretty good. Uh, you might have heard the, the soft little whelps of poor CL off to the side uh, getting hit by things while she's trying to do her work. Uh, you will lose ranking if this happens, but obviously we don't quite care about that. So uh, she will not die or anything. She will just take the hits. You know, a step up from uh, Natalia from that one golden eye uh, mission, I guess. But uh, yeah, she's pretty hardy. She's fine. She deactivates the teleport, uh, the, the bomb rather, and teleports out. But we are, we can't. So we get our communications get jammed. Things are shaking. Uh, this screen shake will advance the RNG every frame it's happening, so it's one of the reasons why uh, we can't quite RNG manipulate this stage. But uh, she says, yeah, you got to get out of there. So we just jump out a hole in the bottom of the ship. Thankfully, everything is fine before Kua Gust Ankus shows up, another fantastic name. Uh, we're going to be using his ice weakness in the shield for some double hits there, just careful manipulation of the shield to put it in the right place. Uh, it's pretty bold to try to hit him out of the, uh, the, the tornado grab there. Uh, but Crank Dead's going to be going for it. One more jump there, and yet yeah, does get two hits. Only needs one more, and he lost his charge, so he's going to play this safe. And uh, I approve. It is very easy for things to get out of control, especially that grab. That grab does a ton of damage, but Crank Dead brings it home. Only the C ranking? Hmm? All right. Uh, yeah, the, the biggest problem, I think, with trying to go for high ranks in this game, in addition to just not taking damage, which is <laughs> pretty hard, uh, it's getting enough kills. Uh, you do need to go way out of your way in some stages to rack up a ton of kills. And uh, thankfully, when you do a speedrun and you skip those things, uh, that will uh, lower your ranking quite a bit. You don't have to worry about being in S rank. So uh, we get back to base, and El Pizzo's gone. He's on a, a mission or something. It's unclear. He's gone rogue and uh, we're going to try to track his location to one of four places. The first place we're going is the stage of Burble Heckalot. Uh, the donation comment stole my, my corny joke that he makes you say Heckalot, but uh, I just wanted it on the record. I had that planned. Uh, I said it to Crankta during practice, and he just stared at me, and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of response I wanted. So there's El Pizzo. He says something about elves, the dark elf, and he takes off. And uh, we're back in the jungle, so that means we're going to be seeing some troublesome enemies here. But uh, Crankton's going to be taking them out. We're also going to see some more climbing in the trees. Dropped down a little bit early there. Was counting on being on one more platform. But uh, thankfully, there was uh, some ground there. A series of grapples here, very difficult. Uh, honestly, harder than just climbing up here, which is kind of unintentional. Has like an extra life for like your troubles. So uh, not the worst, uh, the worst thing to happen. We're back into the ruins. And uh, we're going to have another one of these mini-bosses in just a little bit. We're going to do pretty much uh, second verse, same as the first. But uh, not before we do a little bit of a clip here. And uh, 
We, we just saw that was a, another left-facing clip. It, it didn't look as, as crazy and chaotic as uh, some of those uh, those left clips can, but uh, we'll see how this goes here. The charge throw, and uh, he's playing it pretty safe on this one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, didn't quite catch. <laughs> the water's filling. You never want to see the water if you're doing a run. The shield not quite cooperating. You can't jump. Oh, he went for it, but he took the hit, so he's not going to die to the spikes. Okay, there it is. That was a mess. It was a little messy, but you're fine. Down to half health. Uh, Krenkta is really good at, at mystery tournament and blind racing, so he's he's really good at, at playing under pressure uh, and adapting to all kinds of situations. It's uh, one of the things I admire about him as a speedrunner, and he's showing it here. He's back up to full health and uh, ready to take on one of the worst bosses. Uh, Burble Hecalot is, uh, well, you saw a little bit of him in his portrait. Uh, but he, he makes a heck of an entrance. He's like the, the security entity here. Uh, so here's Olpizo. He's going to break in and to this Dark Elf. He just, he's in there. He's gone. And then the security robot shows up. And it's just a little frog. Look at him. Uh, cute, but deadly. Uh, we're going to try to uh, keep him off of, uh, off of the walls, mostly. It's also annoying when he gets up on the ceiling. But when he gets on the wall, he's going to, uh, to shake it and knock some caterpillars loose. Uh, if he eats the caterpillars, he gets stronger, and you need to uh, waste time hitting him to kind of de-rank him back down. Uh, you won't deal damage. If he eats a yellow caterpillar, it's especially bad. So yeah, he's going to go out of his way to make sure that that caterpillar dies. Only needs one more hit, and uh, just some really great patterns there from Burble. So didn't do a great job of showcasing why he is uh, such a difficult boss. Uh, maybe we'll see him again in a refight, and, and maybe we'll have a, a different story. But uh, that was a, a really great job. And uh, thankfully, I, you won't see what happens when he eats, eats the yellow caterpillar, because it uh, it's like a 10-second time loss to some ridiculous invincible pattern. Here's El Pizzo. He says something, something, Dark Elf. Uh, and uh, we're getting a message here from X that's, uh, you know, I'm the seal. I can't help you right now. You need to do this. And uh, don't worry. We, you know, we may ignore our mission orders uh, rampantly, but uh, we will. <laughs> if, if the goal is to defeat a boss, then we're in. That's something we're up for, apparently. We teleport back in. Uh, we've got three more locations to uh, chase El Pizzo to, and you might recognize some of these portraits as the colorful cast of characters we just saw. Um, no major difference in the route order. It's just you, you, know, you happen to have this element equipped or that element equipped. So uh, we're going to be going to uh, Sage Harpuya's stage here, um, sort of a, a wind, thunder, uh, elemental kind of situation here and uh, a, a pretty difficult boss fight as well with a lot of um, tricky patterns. There's a couple combos that have like different finishers you need to be ready for. Just barely getting away from those uh, enemies that uh, carry in those uh, ridiculous spike balls. So actually, uh, are pretty hard to react to. The, the camera on this GBA game is, is pulled in pretty tight. We got a drop here and does get in there. That is a very important item. That is another uh, cyber elf that, uh, again, we haven't talked too much about, but we will eventually, I promise. Invisible platforms over the spikes. And uh, it's, uh, it looks really impressive. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Anytime the spikes are raised up, uh, those are the only times there's actually a pit that you need to worry about. But other than that, you can just kind of dash. And when I say it, you can now see, oh, he's landing on all those little gaps, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, though there is a little bit scary right there and also getting into this gap here at the end. But yeah, Crank Dud manages it just fine. Heading back up here, vertical movement, uh, lots of room for optimization while jumping. And we get uh, an update here that this soldier is, is being mind controlled. So they're like, whatever you do, don't kill these soldiers. Zero, don't do it. We follow instructions, Zero. And he's, well, those guys are just incapacitated. But uh, these other guys are kind of in the way. And they drop extra lives, so. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry. I didn't mm, I just, I, I don't know. The bullets are just coming out. I can't stop it. All right, bye. We got, we got like six, six lives now or something like that. Pretty good, pretty good. You know, most, prevented most casualties. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they weren't looking. We got, we found El Pizzo. He's here. Uh, there's a, a couple different things he's trying to do. He's trying to find uh, technology that will help confuse enemy scanners. He's trying to learn more about whatever this dark elf is. And uh, we're always too slow. He always takes off and replaced by uh, this boss here. So Sage Harpia is going to be coming in. The uh, charge shot will stun Harpia, but uh, you know that shield does take a long time to charge up. So you need to be ready to deal with some of these patterns. 
after this triple slash, you can get this or that and reacting to the, uh, the, the charge you saw before or that downwards crescent. Uh, the hitboxes are very different, so uh, it was hard to react to, but Crank Dud does it perfectly. So some parting words from Sage Harpuya. It's not over yet, something like that. And uh, they're taking off. Let's do, let's do one donation comment here before we jump into the next stage. All right, we have a $20 donation from rloey86. Had to donate during one of my favorite GBA games. Found this game the hardest of the Zero games as a kid, but having replayed it, I think it's probably my favorite of the series. Thank you so much. Yeah, I concur. This is, uh, the, the Zero series as a whole is... Uh, uh, I think it's more difficult than, than in Mega Man or Mega Man X. And, uh, you know, this being the hardest of them all on the harder difficulty, it really... Uh, I cannot understate uh, how difficult this is. We can see the, the life count pop up in the bottom right. We got six extra lives. We're nice and healthy. Uh, we're going after Fairy Leviathan, who has this uh, snow-themed stage with uh, this really this bump and jam here that just creeps in. I love the track. And uh, we're dealing with some mines all over the place. Um, this dog is trouble. He just he does this big dopey leap into the air, uh, but it, he will grab you and bite you, and you have to shake him off, and it's, it's really a pain. So uh, as cute as he is, he's trouble. That kind of seems to be the theme. These little guys, are just they're just trying to throw snowballs. They're just having fun. Uh, they will deal at least a quarter of your health if they hit you, so they are a problem. Uh, and they're getting taken out. Just the, the one shot and the saber is uh, what you need to take them out. We're getting some more uh, of those uh, frame-perfect uh, jumps, dashing with the shield. And we got this drop here. There's mines everywhere. There's a snowball coming down. So he's just trying to catch these walls just a little bit. That was pretty clean. It, it, it's possible, I've heard, to do that section without touching any walls. But it's like a multiple frame-perfect ridiculous series. So uh, that was, was pretty solid that we just saw from Crankdot heading into uh, the boss fight here. Uh, Fairy Leviathan uh, does not have any sort of uh, randomness with the boss pattern here. It's set, so RNG manipulation was not a major goal uh, for this stage. And uh, we'll see how this fight goes here. With the set pattern, you can count on being able to hit her in certain places. And so you can see the Crankdot's routed out some really nice movements with the shield here. He did take a hit, so he's going to need to be careful looking for his last hit. Just trying to catch the toes there with it just barely. Didn't quite. Clearing out some of these spikes. Needs one more charge and then one more slash, and that's going to do it. Nice. Yeah, I have to be really careful there, because uh, she has a couple of attacks that she does based on like where you are. And one of them is like this downward stab. And she was kind of queued up to do that if I went under her at any point. Um, and that probably would have killed me if um, she did it in just the right way. So. Yeah, that would have been, it would have been bad if she had killed you. Right. So we're moving on to our final stage uh, of, this, uh, of this next set of stages, that is. Um, we're going after fighting Fefnir. I can't help but feel like Fefnir is supposed to be either Fafnir or Fenrir. They're both beasts of mythology, but uh, apparently they like to just take something popular and change a letter. So I'm not sure which of the two it was supposed to be. But uh, here we are, long drop. This is an incredibly tough stage. Uh, threading the needle on these, these molten carrying delivery system thing, uh, dodging these is incredibly difficult. And uh, they hurt a lot. They hurt a whole lot. Uh, we're actually going to intentionally touch one at some point to avoid the instant death lava that is all over the place here. Uh, but Crankton's going to be playing pretty aggressive here. He's not going to be waiting for cycles. He's going to be taking hits for iframes to get through. He's going to be going dropping down to get these wall jumps to get through just a little sooner. He's going to be passing up on the health and the uh, extra life that's hiding on that last scene. Nice grapple there to get under. Here's the damage boost. Oh, this is good. This has been a really good stage so far. He does get this merciful uh, health refill. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's still, he's still not quite topped off here. Has to wait for these turrets. Uh, the turrets will, will uh, they're, they're pretty funny. We can talk about them a little bit. But first, we've got these gunners who, uh, they, they're here all day. They're like, I got him, boss. I got, oh, okay. Well, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, I'm sorry about that one. Uh, Crankton does take an extra hit there, so he's going to, oh, nice. The health drop is going to top him off. They're all as planned, right? Yeah. 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 All right, so we've got uh, Fighting Fafnir. Uh, the shield's going to do uh, a lot of work in this fight. He fights, uh, he's got this big gun arm. 
and uh, I didn't realize it's just kind of got teeth on it. It's, it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, he uh, his yeah, the shield you can see it just eat up that projectile there. That's like a you know two out of uh, four or five attacks that Fefnir can do. So the shield really good. You need to be careful when you throw it. That's a really dangerous grab that he just does there. Uh, he, it just comes out. He just lurches forwards, and all of a sudden uh, he can have you and take away half your health with it. But very good fight from Crank Dud yet again. And that's going to do it for uh, Fighting Fafnir for now. It turns out uh, all three of our characters are uh, they're looking they're looking for more. Uh, they, it, I, I think uh, you know Sage Harpuya has got like you know, interests, is looking out for 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 things, is kind of you know a good person at heart, even if they're they're kind of uh, aligned against us currently. Uh, but uh, Fairy Leviathan and, and Fafnir just kind of want to fight. I don't know. They're just. They're just ready to mix it up, so uh, they'll be back in a little bit. We can see Alpizo here. It's pretty confident doing the uh, the crazy eyes into the camera. I don't know if he was, uh, you know, practicing before he initiated comms. He was like making sure that he got the angle right. Uh, but uh, whatever the case, he nailed it. It was very menacing. Uh, he's uh, basically what he's doing is he's going to march into Neo Arcadia. Uh, he's going to jam their systems. And he's after the Dark Elf. He's learned that the Dark Elf is contained in Neo Arcadia by X, actually. X is locked into some machine that's containing it. And uh, after, after being thoroughly beaten uh, in his first assault, he becomes kind of disillusioned, is looking for power, and uh, seeks the power through the Dark Elf. So uh, he's going in. Uh, he's got a clever plan. He's been working. He went to all those locations to assemble all these pieces to make this master plan. Uh, we got to go after him. So our plan is to teleport into the front gates. Going in. We got some RNG manipulation uh, that is uh, one, of the, one of the most achievable of all the stages so far. Uh, so we'll see if we get it. It's pretty important because Rainbow Devil uh, has some pretty nasty attacks. And uh, knowing exactly what is going to happen in that fight will count for a lot. Waiting to destroy this gun because this uh, charge animation, these particles, uh, will change the RNG. So it's part of the route here to uh, let that animation play out before uh, defeating those gunners. I think the, that turret also will uh, play a little bit of a role in advancing the RNG. We're looking for health drops here. Yeah, we're good. So we are going to uh, have the, the pattern we desire. Uh, that said, it uh, doesn't mean the boss is free or anything. Uh, a lot of these attacks are, are really hard to dodge. Uh, a lot of little hitboxes everywhere. Uh, a lot of uh, needle threading to get in and out of all these different attacks. This one looks horrible to deal with, um, but uh, it actually is pretty desirable because you are able to get hits in uh, while he's spinning and while he's collecting himself. Uh, Cranktud is, is being careful here to, um, I say as he gets hit, but he is being careful to uh, not throw his shield at the wrong time. Um, there's a lot of iframes on certain animations with this boss, so uh, you know missing a saber during that time is not so bad, but missing your shield throw is a pretty big deal. He uh, did miss an opportunity for a couple hits and uh, did take a couple of his own. I think he can still take one more hit, and he only needs to find one more. There it is. Nice job. So our brainless assault on the front gates is off to a good start. 93 points. That's pretty good. That's, uh, I think, 96 is the cutoff for uh, the coveted S rank. Uh, but uh, thankfully, we've, <laughs> we've misbehaved so much. We've tanked our ranking so far. There's no hope that we'll ever get back up to uh, either A or S. We're doing a bit of menuing here. I'm glad he remembered, because I definitely forgot. I'll be honest, I almost forgot. That <laughs> um, he is uh, equipping a cyber elf. So these are, uh, these are described by CL as, as living organisms, but they're basically programs. Uh, and in terms of us, as our cold calculating speedrunners, uh, they're just items. We're just going to use them up and just consume them. Uh, this one is going to have the time it takes to charge our shield. So this is going to help out a lot with various boss fights. And there's a really big skip. Uh, he is walking over the most horrible room in the entire game, uh, and in, in much of video games, really. It might be on like a top 20 list. Uh, you have to dance all around on the walls. The floor is lava. You're knocking the mines into uh, cracked walls to break them. And uh, yeah, he just he just skips the whole thing. So I'm sure a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, fans who've played this game before, they're just, uh, you know, jaws just dropped or something if you haven't seen the speed run. Nice section here using these wall jumps to uh, escape the lava. The lava will uh, mess with RNG quite a bit, so it makes it very hard to uh, try to manipulate this stage. But thankfully, with our uh, quick charge here, you can see as he goes through the door, it does charge up pretty quickly. Um, that's going to mean we don't care too much about uh, boss patterns because we're just going to be able to 
dodge whatever comes our way and immediately fire back with this shield. Here's fighting Fefnir. He's powered up. He's AP Fefnir, and he's got this ridiculous backwards-looking tricycle thing with four ridiculous guns. It looks like it should topple over, uh, but you know what? He's, he's doing him. He's there in the middle, actually. And uh, the shield is going to sort through and take out most of these guns. So yeah, now he is just going to get this set pattern. Uh, you do need to be mindful that the, you are slowly escaping him, like the Austin Powers bulldozer, slowly to the left. Uh, you do need to make sure that you're constantly keeping ahead of him, throwing that shield. One more. Yeah, that's going to do it. So we've got, uh, obviously, you know, the, with the final trio is going to return. So. Once more, we're going to take on uh, AP Leviathan and uh, eventually AP Harpuya. Uh, Crank, remind me again, what does AP stand for? It's like a Armored Phenomenon or something like that. Armored Phenomenon. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty... That's It's got impact, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just the way this game rolls, I guess. We're heading out to uh, Leviathan is going to be next. Uh, we're going to see similar uh, level structure. As, uh, um, as the previous level, which means we're also similarly going to be able to just skip right past the whole thing. Um, this one is, uh, is not as bad, uh, nearly as bad as the previous stage, but, uh, but here we are. Just one quick clip, and we're going. Um, it's, uh, I think it's the next one, actually, that has a, an actually extra life, so uh, we will also uh, be, be doing it for the likes. Oh, okay, right. Damage boost off of the spikes. Yeah, he's good. Um, that is uh, Sage Harpuya stage after this. has uh, It's a very vertical stage, very uh, grapple-heavy stage. And uh, speaking of grapples, we're going to be doing this climb here. You're supposed to wait for some ice to be lifted up on this water. Uh, but he's going without it here. The tricky spot is right here. Yeah, there it is. Nice job. Moving on. We've got uh, health refill, thankfully. Uh, needs to uh, avoid some spikes here as he just slips right under there, making it look easy. And uh, I'll pretty much uh, knocking on the, the boss's door here already. Fairy Leviathan, AP Leviathan rather, uh, is going to uh, going to transform. And I, I I can't help but point out there's a, a bit of a, a misthought placement of the weak point here. She's just kind of helplessly trapped right at the front of this thing. Like the head is like the first thing that comes at you, uh, and that's what we want to be hitting here. So just. Just beaning her in the forehead with this, this frisbee, basically, is how this boss works. Um, having to adjust to some of these patterns, we're going to get a good charge after this. And uh, it's really risky to try to hit uh, as, as she's uh, charging away, so we are going to wait. That shield managed to take out a dragon and land a hit. That audio cue there, the haha, -ha, that means she's going to do this charge attack. So Crankta knows it's coming, and he knows uh, she's going to track his vertical position, so he needs to be careful about either staying on the ground and jumping over, or vice versa. That was a really good fight from Crankta. She took me quite on an adventure there, just going back and forth all the time. Uh, we were in the practice room earlier, and the, the noise in the practice room, so many people are in there. Uh, it's, it's really a lot of fun, just the passion and excitement in there. But when you're trying to practice your run and you're listening for an audio cue, uh, it turns out it was pretty difficult. So, uh, you know, she's off screen, and then you just hear that ha-ha, that's your cue. Uh, we totally missed it. So, uh, thankfully, here on stage, we're nailing it. Uh, Crankton is, oh. is on a really good run here. Um, he was, uh, did you, do you not have enough? Yeah, I, I'm, uh, like 20 short. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> well, so... There'll be one more menu. Okay, after this that's stage. fine, that's fine, that's fine. Um, that is, uh, you need to, you need to feed your baby cyber elf. See, I have trouble thinking of it as just a program that you run, like, you need to, to feed it and grow it, and then no one seems to care that you just use it, and it, it, it goes away, they say, I think, but they don't want to use the word die, but... It probably does. It's a little weird, but uh, it is very useful. So um, we are, the other things that, you know, other than health, the other capsules that drop are crystals, and we use those to power up our elves. One more clip here. Here's that extra life I was talking about. And uh, he's going to get, uh, for sure, throughout this stage, enough crystals to uh, finish feeding that baby elf. And it's important. It is going to knock off half the health of a boss, basically. So uh, obviously uh, very helpful in the speed run. The final boss is a ton of health, so we're going to be saving it for that. Uh, just means we need to get back into the menu just one more time. Uh, very tricky section here, uh, getting the, the grapples from these things just off stage. These uh, enemies with the shield will block you, and then one really risky clip. Yes, good.
Going to be using another one of our uh, quick charge uses here, heading into uh, Sage Harpuya. And uh, Sage Harpuya is, uh, is opposed to uh, El Pizzo here and uh, probably uh, his interests align with yours in this situation, but uh, we're going to see that El Pizzo is actually messing with some dark powers and uh, in addition to just being able to completely stun anything he wants in that kind of overpowered way that happens only during cutscenes in uh, these, uh, these Mega Man games, uh, he's also just got straight up mind control. So poor, poor Sage Harpuya is uh, about to get turned against us. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know, the, the, the voice line that you're going to see whenever these, these missiles come out is Yamero, which is just stop. And it's kind of sad. Uh, when you when you really think about it, but uh, we're gonna try not to think about it too much We're just gonna throw the boomerang and uh, Even though we do get to hear that voice line uh, It is the pattern that we want actually we do want as many of these rockets as we can get uh, we want to do one nice high jump over one and uh, That will bait the next rocket to be high and didn't quite get that hit there And now what kind of pattern do we get we get the mode 7 attack? Uh, it looks a lot more dangerous than it is trying to once purposely tried to get hit by it and had a lot of trouble actually pulling that off. So uh, just kind of mashing dash through the tornado will get you through it. You've also got this lightning chicken leg pattern here. Uh, it's, it's pretty risky to go for a hit uh, from behind there. So once more with the mode 7 attack, which is just pretty much just a straight up time loss every time it happens. Uh, just nothing there. Just, just left ready to do another one of these. So this is some of the worst luck we're getting here from uh, from Sage Harpuya, but it, at least it's not going to kill you, right? So this is uh, this is okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not cursing anything, right? Well, you're fine. You're going to absolutely get this last hit easy. Yeah, I thought you actually managed to loop it all the way around the boss and not hit it, but he did. He did connect and get that last hit. And uh, with the yeah, it looks yeah, Sage is fine here. Uh, a little a little woozy after the mind control and the. The, uh, the beat up, but uh, they're going to be okay. They're going to teleport out. And uh, we got we got an Alpizo to catch. They're off, uh, heading to the, uh, the sort of mainframe where the Dark Elf is kept. It's the final stage. It's going to feature, of course, because this is a Mega Man game, a boss rush where we're going to refight uh, all of these bosses. And so that means the quick charge that we have, our last crystal, not this guy. This is our, our half health reducing guy who's now been properly fed and uh, hopefully also equipped here, yes. And uh, yeah, these are gonna help a lot through this final stage. Uh, the quick charge uh, is if you die anywhere, you lose your, your quick charge. So uh, imperative not to die. I mean, obviously you're trying not to die all the time, but it really counts for a lot in this stage, really important. Uh, and there's a lot of scary stuff. You're refighting every boss. Um, there's uh, you know health refills in between bosses, but um, each one honestly has a, has a shot to kill you and you know nine, none of them are well polar cameras is maybe pretty free but all of them are, are very dangerous and the stages themselves are, are also pretty difficult we can see uh, another uh, zip coming up here left facing and whoop, yep guess get in there uh, moving on to uh, yeah 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 let's do it clap for the for the whoop <laughs> we're in there now to the uh, the first set of bosses we're gonna be taking on uh, the high leg Urobakal refight here first uh, we're not quite topped up on health, and uh, health is uh, a valuable resource in this fight in particular. It's very common to get hit by that jump attack, for example, very hard to deal with um, in conjunction with uh, the, uh, the claw that just kind of whips out, also has a pretty big hitbox on it. Crankton's done a really good job of avoiding damage so far. And uh, yeah, as long as he plays it safe here, he's gonna, well, you did go for that extra hit though. Um, He's going to have no problems. Even if he gets hit by the Slinky, he's going to be fine. So just going to throw out the Saber with the active hitbox, and that's going to do it. We're teleporting out. There's our refills, but we don't need him, apparently. I don't know. He's, <laughs> he's feeling good. Uh, we got uh, Phoenix Manion here, and so this is, this is trouble. If, if Phoenix Magnion didn't mess with RNG, we might be able to RNG manipulate this stage, which would make a huge difference on the final boss. Uh, patterns on the final boss matter a lot, and uh, some of them are very slow, very dangerous, and uh, some of them are, are very easy to deal with. So it's a shame 
that uh, we do have to refight this guy because he is messing with RNG all over the place. So far, we've had a very good fight. And uh, good luck on the, the mirror image attack. Let's we'll see one more time. Nope, so he does get hit also. Uh, getting uh, one of those is fine because we still kind of hit the break point here. So there's the kill. Um, if you get uh, two slashes from that pattern, uh, you're going to have to do a whole nother cycle in order to uh, finish him off. So uh, in terms of uh, your time, uh, that was still uh, a really good Phoenix fight, switching to the fire weakness here for Polar Cameras. Uh, in, somehow an easier fight than it was before. Well, that's not true. It's not so easy to uh, to time the jumps. There's some, some real finesse to uh, getting the loop-to-loop -loop pattern to work, but uh, we don't need to do that here with our quick charge. Uh, we can get uh, these stuns here with just like a half step. It's, uh, it's threatening sounding, but uh, in practice, really not a very threatening boss. We can go ahead and clap for this one. You just, you know, you press the button, you held B, and then you, you let go. Good job. And uh, so the door's in the top left, but uh, Cranked is just going to we're out and uh, we're moving on. Um, there is uh, some scary spike jumps here. Uh, not so scary as some of the stuff that comes towards uh, the end of the stage. Dangerous clip here. All right, he does not touch the spikes. It is possible uh, for that to go horribly, horribly wrong, but we're OK. And uh, I, you know, I don't want to jinx anything, but this has been a really, really good run from Crank Dud so far, and we're very far along. Do we have the, the timer somewhere? Oh, I don't have it. Oh, wait, no, there we go. Yeah, OK, so I'm looking at that timer. I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, I won't tell you what the what the record is uh, currently or anything, but uh, we'll just uh, we'll just keep in mind this is a good run. All right, Panther, Flau Claws, refights, uh, pretty much uh, same strategy here. Uh, you want to stay close to make sure that you uh, don't get that. He's just kind of standing there for a little bit. Not not the greatest open from Panther, um, but uh, you really don't want this uh, this like purple uh, spirally thing that he throws out. We're hopefully not going to see it. He's doing this uh, this charge attack, which is maybe one of the trickier to deal with. I had the jump away with the two uh, Frito attacks there. Yeah, that was pretty good, but cleans it up. Whenever you take an early hit in a boss fight, it can be pretty nerve-wracking, so uh, it's always uh, a really good feeling to just uh, ace the rest of the boss fight there. Moving on to a Burbel heck a lot Pretty much uh, as annoying as he was before. We didn't see any sort of shenanigans with the Caterpillars last time. Let's see if we can keep that trend going. Uh, it's possible to uh, burn the foliage at the top in this fight, but it's actually a visual cue for when Caterpillars, uh, where they're going to come down. So it's really important um, that uh, he actually doesn't burn it. Uh, just barely preventing the uh, eating of one of those Caterpillars there. And middle of the stage, he's going to be able to do uh, one more. Oh, OK, yeah, he does go up and get him. Nice job. Very good fight. We got one more refight left. It's uh, it's Kuwagust Ankus, that, that beetle guy we fought uh, on the airship. But surprise, Oops. who's this guy? What? Yeah, you just fight two bosses all of a sudden. It is a real slap in the face when you play this game. That's actually his brother. And they, they take turns here. The, uh, the guy in the background is just hanging out. I think, you know, as impressive as it is to watch Crank Dead, the guy in the background just, just spinning. Uh, I don't know what he's doing back there, but he's having fun. Uh, Crank does having fun too. He's doing some pretty good stuff here with the shield. Uh, they have uh, unique invincibility uh, uh, frames for these bosses, so you can kind of hit one, then go hit the other without waiting. Uh, so uh, you want to kind of be alternating your attacks as much as possible. Uh, we're going to get uh, one more cycle here. Crank did taking a lot of care to not charge up the shield too early because you, it's very hard to get those dash jumps. He can take that hit. It's fine. Uh, he does have to wait a little bit here. You know, the boss has no health, but you need this attack to happen to actually end the fight. So that is going to do it. That is uh, probably the scariest refight. And uh, he nailed it. So we've got uh, just the, the final boss sequence. Uh, but there is a bit of stage before that, and it's not so easy. So. Uh, you might be wondering, hey, if we can clip out of these rooms, why are we fighting the bosses at all? Well, the other bosses don't spawn. So unfortunately, in order to beat the game, you have to spawn the final boss to defeat him in the first place. Nice job there with the grapple. Uh, it's not over yet. There's one more scary fall here. Yes, OK, we are good. Yeah, the head shank. <laughs> the head shake. He was a little worried about it. All right, there's a health refill here. This is fine. And uh, yeah, final boss is up here. I don't, we're in here now, I guess. We, they're supposed to go the long way around, I guess. But uh, So Zero tries to walk into the fight from off camera, but he's already on camera. So now he's mostly off camera. El Pizzo's just talking over shoulders. Zero's gone. I don't know. He's, things are a little out of hand here. But uh, hopefully the, the, the game will figure out what's going on. The dramatic stabbing of X releasing the seal on the Dark Elf. You can't see it because Zero's off camera, but he's, he's stunned and that 
that magical plot stun that uh, Mega Man bosses can do in these games. Uh, but don't worry, we'll break free in order to, to actually fight the boss when it's time. And uh, we got, um, yeah, two phases here. Uh, the first phase is going to be coming up in just a, a little bit, but uh, what do you think? Do some donations here, Crankdud? It's pretty long. Yeah. All right, let's do three, let's say, maybe. All right, excellent. We have a $25 donation from Junior Noodle. Cancer sucks, but Crank Dud sure doesn't. First, first time watching GDQ Live and can't wait for the rest of the week. Uh, we have a $5 donation from Lazaraptor. Props to this commentary. This guy is fantastic. Can we all agree? Can we give this guy a hand? Excellent, excellent commentary. We have $50 from Dirty Tiger. Incredible commentary and gameplay going on right now. Really enjoying this run. Keep it up, y'all. All right, so El Pizzo is just, I think he just ate the Dark Elf. I, he just kind of, anyway, it's, uh, it must taste bad. It's probably like black licorice or something because it's, uh, it's affecting him in ways here. We've got this dramatic transformation scene here. El Pizzo entering. Uh, you know, you'd think you would fight him in his normal form, and then this would be his final form or something, but he's just getting started here with this first form. Uh, a couple different attacks, almost all of them you can interrupt El Pizzo out of, uh, including his guard there. Moto Ikenai, I think, is hold on, don't move. Um, but uh, yeah, he will block your stuff. You can throw the shield behind him and curve it around behind him, and that will hit. Uh, this attack is pretty dangerous. It will do a lot of damage if you let it catch you. This is summoning an enemy, and uh, it can drop health, though, so it can actually help you a little bit. Uh, he's playing pretty carefully here. Needs two more charges. All right, very close down to the wire. He does land the shield point blank. All right, moving on to the second phase. We have a, a genuinely terrifying transformation here. Just, just watch this. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty messed up. All right, what kind of pattern are we gonna get? This is gonna be, this is gonna be the difference. I see the, 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 I'm looking up the guys on the timer here. Um, we gotta use our Cyber Elf here. This is going to have all of this boss health. Uh, Crankton's pretty low on health, so let's see, let's see, we want, this is not the, this is, yeah, this is not what we want. So he's gonna have to take a timeout to, uh, to kill these things. He is gonna get the pattern he wants. This is the platform, all right, he's charging up the shield. Uh, he does. Oh, he got plenty of time. He's got. He, this is. This goes on a while. This is the sort of an, the anticlimactic finish here. He gets the last. That's it. That's, that's time. time. Uh, one hour. I, we, I, I was late on that. So it, the time is one hour twenty nine seconds. Crankton, what is your your world record? That, that's a good question. <laughs> it's about <laughs> one hour twenty nine seconds. It's pretty close seconds. to it. If it's, it's not it. Or... Yeah, that's fantastic. That is a fantastic run from Crankton. Holy moly. I'm starting to play it back in my head now. I'm wondering like the little things that maybe could have could have <laughs> tipped the scales. I'm asking for so much. Uh, getting so close to your PB to a world record in a marathon run. Man, nice job, Crankta. Uh, I don't I don't want to cut away and throw it throw it to anything before I I know you're going to say that you're good, but I need to say if you've got any <laughs> last words here before we close it out. Yeah, um, it's a we, good run. Can we get a huge applause for Mythical's commentary? He's done a fantastic job. <laughs> I want it. I want it on record. I was not fishing for that, uh, but I will gladly accept it. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of respect uh, respect for Crank Dud as a runner. Uh, this last cutscene is going to go on a while. The text is going to play out, so I think we're going to we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for uh, for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure, both for uh, both of us, I'm sure. Uh, up next is going to be uh, Majora's Mask. So stick around. There's a ton of great runs. Well, waiting to come up here on uh, Awesome Games Done Quick 2019, so stay tuned. Thank you so much, Mythical, and thanks, Crank Dud, for an awesome run. We do have The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask coming up next. Actually, coming up directly next, we are having a quick chat with some folks from the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Uh, this is Awesome Games Done Quick 2019, and as we're getting that set up, uh, I'm going to read a couple more donations for you. Um, we have $10 from Frar12, extremely clean run and great commentary. Good luck. 
we have uh, $50 from North by Northwest. Here's to another year of AGDQ. Let's raise some money for a great cause, my dudes. And speaking of my dude, my dude is currently in the lead for Majora's Mask file name. It has surpassed Tingle and is now ahead by about $500. So if you want Tingle, Baguette, or any of the other options, I think we're going to be closing it off pretty soon. So get your donations in right away. We have a $20 donation from Robotic Dream. So hyped to see Pope Squidward just destroy Majora's Mask and shout outs to the Mari Safari. All right, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Uh, I've been Yellow Killer B. I'm actually gonna throw it over to the interview desk and Kizaran's gonna have a chat with Amy and Erica from the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Take it away. What's up, AGDQ? It's Kizaran again. I am here with Amy and Erica, both from the Prevent Cancer Foundation. How are you two doing? Good. Great, thank you. So I kind of want to just go over the general what is PCF about kind of deal. So. Uh, what are we about? Yeah. We are about cancer prevention and early detection, in a simple answer. Mm -hmm. Sure, so we are 33 years old as an organization, and we, as Amy said, we are focused on cancer prevention and early detection, and we see out our mission through four pillars, through education, outreach, research, and advocacy. That's super cool. So I just wanna go into this real quick before we go deeper in. So PCF actually means a lot to me because I've been a part of GDQ for a while, some of you know that, and because I was a part of GDQ, you know, I did my due diligence to see, hey, what's PCF about and whatnot, so I went to their website and read up a bunch of stuff, and I actually recently went through a cancer scare. Um, I just recently, back in March, got diagnosed with testicular cancer, and I wouldn't have known what to do, I wouldn't have known where to look, I wouldn't have known anything if I didn't go on the website, do my due diligence, look into everything. So AGDQ and PCF in general have a really close place to my heart. That's such an in inspirational story. I think that you know, your story and you're such a perfect example of the intersection of the work that we do. You know, I mean, it's really easy to get people interested in doing research and community level programs and outreach, but the education is such an important piece because all the other pieces don't matter if we can't educate the public. And if we can't be a part of changing people's lives in, in an important way, and, and that's reflected through your own story. Yes, thank you so much for sharing your story. And we are focused on cancer prevention, and it, it is knowing your body and knowing your family history, for instance, is also important. And as Amy said, education is a large part of what we do, raising awareness about cancer prevention, ways you can prevent it by everyday things like wearing sunscreen or not smoking, getting good exercise in, and also getting screened at the appropriate age for certain types of cancers. And I would say, you know, it's, it's, it's knowing your own body, but we also had an educational campaign a few years ago on checking your mate. And so oftentimes it's your partner um, that is seeing your body or feeling your body and is, might be the person that's going to recognize a change in a mole on your back that you might not see or feel a lump somewhere. And it's so important to be able to have those conversations and for it to be, you know, socially acceptable to discuss that and to know what to do if, if there is a difference and if you feel something different in yourself or in a loved one. And that, you know, to get over that fear of taking a step and doing something about it. Mm -hmm. And we were talking before this interview about some of the future projects and um, the expansion of PCF. Do you want to go into that a little bit? Sure, sure. I'd be happy to. It's with the um, money from the AGDQ, from this event, the Gaming Marathon, we've been able to make a significant impact in cancer prevention and early detection. Um, a lot of what I do are community grants and international grants, and we're really excited to, to announce five new international grants. So they're for cervical cancer, breast, colorectal, and lung in three different countries in Africa, in Mexico, and in um, Poland. 
And we're really excited about these because we're focused with the funds from the Gaming Marathon on um, looking at low and middle income countries where they really need resources and education for screening, as well as supporting technologies that advance quality screening and quality information getting out there to the population. So we're really excited, for instance, in Mexico City, it's the leading, uh, colorectal cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths. So we're going really where um, cancer screening is needed. And all of this is enabled through this event and the gaming marathon. Now we're talking macro with PCF right now. I want to get a little more micro. So mm -hmm. I'd like to actually find out what you two do individually. So Amy, what, what do you do for PCF? So I run the um, Accounting and Administration Department. I've been at the Prevent Cancer Foundation for just over 11 years, so for, for a while now. Um, you know, I really love working there. And, you know, I think for me, working in finance and administration, it is easy in my day-to-day -to, -day to get away from the work that we do and the importance of the work that we do. Um, and so it's been so great to be here and get to be a mouthpiece and, and discuss with people the work that we're doing. Um, just earlier today, we held a panel with some of, some of our grantees, so some of the people that have received our funds and the work that they've been able to do. And it's just so invigorating to hear um, at that level, you know, the, the work that we're able to accomplish um, outside of our offices every day. Mm -hmm. And Erica? Sure. So I've been with the foundation for 14 years, and wow. I direct our community grants both in the U.S. and internationally and do a, a few other programs. A little bit of everything. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything in breast health education. And I think a personal anecdote for me is I get to go to some of the grant sites where we're supporting their work in the communities, really at the grassroots level and see how it's impacting individuals, whether it's training people to go out and educate their neighbors, or whether it's screening. Uh, people have been in, able to get screening through our support, whereas they didn't qualify or didn't have the funds to get screened. So actually meeting people and talking to them really makes a difference. And, and it's a real reason why um, we really are impassioned about our mission and what we do at Prevent Cancer. Now, is this uh, your guys' first GDQ event to go to ever, or have you been to one before? Well, I've been to quite a few. Yes, yeah. to, to many, many, many. Um, mm -hmm. I remember meeting Mike years ago when, you know, he called up the office and was, hey, so we're doing this. Would you guys be interested? And um, I personally went when the event was at the Boys and Girls Club, still in D.C., mm -hmm. um, and out by Dallas Airport and here. And it's just, it's in, it's just amazing and inspirational to see how much this event has grown. You know, when it was just like 100 people in the lower level of this Boys and Girls Club, and it was just all kind of, you know, milling around. And, and to see this massive hotel and people just taking over and just the energy in this room is just so exciting. And I, I personally, I absolutely love coming here every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the sense of community and everyone coming together and being here on the first day is always great to see it kicked off. Do you have a favorite part outside of representing the charity when you're at these events at all? That's hard. You know, it's kind of a hard question to throw your way. It is a hard question, but you know what? I mean, being here and getting to see some of the same faces and yeah. actually making friends with people here and, and being like, hey, yes, I do remember you from last year, and how is this going, or how is your sister, how did the wedding go? You know, it, it's such a tremendous privilege to feel part of this community and to just get to sit and chat with people and talk um, not only about gaming, but about people's personal experiences with, with cancer. I think every single person has been touched by cancer, whether personally or through a family member or a friend. And to just be able to, to talk to people and get those personal stories is, I mean, it's priceless. Yeah, I agree. And there's such good energy, I think, not only in the main room, but just down the halls. And in all, there's so many different rooms filled with individuals mm -hmm. and having conversations and practicing or just having fun or playing board games. I think it's such a positive event. Are we going to see you two play board games with anyone anytime soon? I am pretty sure. good on What are you doing games. later? No. Oh, jeez, I got another <laughs> interview and then other than that. <laughs> so I want to ask you guys a couple more questions and then I think we'll be good to go. So... First off, what location have you had the most fun with out of all these events? Because we've been at Dulles, we've been here, 
There's the Boys and Girls Club. Like, do you guys prefer the bigger atmosphere of it, or do you think the smaller, more intimate thing was more fun? Um, I mean, I think it's really exciting to be here this year. Like, just when I made my way in and thought I have to find the amphitheater for our panel this afternoon, it's very exciting to be in such a big space and see how much the event has grown. So I think that's been really exciting. Yeah, I have to say, I was pretty shocked when I came over here to the hotel for the first time. And, I, and they, they opened up the conference room, and I was like, just in awe of, of how much this has grown. It's, it's, it's so impressive. Mm -hmm. Now, every year, we try to beat the last amount that we raised. <laughs> sure. And we're obviously trying to beat that this year. So what do you guys think we're going to get to this year? <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I, I have no doubt that this community can raise as much as you guys put your minds to. Um, I mean, I would love to see that go above 2.5 million, but I mean, we're just, we're, we're so unbelievably grateful for, for literally every single dollar. And as the person who then on the back end has to, you know, go through and does the accounting side of all of this, and it's just, it's absolutely amazing that honestly, the majority of these donations are less than $40. So like every single individual is making a donation and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of people and like how important every single one of you are. Um, I mean, this, it, it would not be event, this event without that. And I'm just in awe. Yeah, and uh, uh, what I do in, in these competitive grant cycles and then seeing all these proposals come in and seeing our process for how it goes out, enabled by these funds through the Gaming Marathon, it's really exciting to think about what we can do in the community, both in the US and across the globe, um, with funds. So it's very exciting. Anything that, um... oh, geez, I lost my train of thought. Never mind. <laughs> well, anyway, I've been Keyseron, and this has been Amy. This has been Erica. and. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for being part of an organization that has made a change to my life and many other lives. Oh, thank you guys so much for having us. Thank we, you. We do have my boy Pope Squidward coming up with The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. So let's get some hype going for that, huh? All right. You better world record, buddy, or I'm going to be upset that I interviewed you. <laughs>
Just want to remind you all of one of our awesome sponsors, Fangamer. Fangamer is a video game merchandise company designing and producing official goods for Deltarune, Dark Souls, Hollow Knight, Persona 5, and more. All profits from our GDQ merchandise sales are donated to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. HTTP dot dot slash slash <laughs> fangamer dot com slash GDQ. Have you all snagged your official AGDQ merch yet? Head on over to the yeti.com slash AGDQ to see all of the incredible designs we've got available. There's tees, pins, and a finale patch that will only be available for a limited time. And a portion of every sale goes to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Got a couple more donations for everybody. We've got a $10 donation from B133, who says this is for Jared. He introduced me to AGDQ when we first started dating, and now it's become a long-standing tradition. Thank you for all you guys are doing, and Jared, I love you, and I'm so excited for all of our adventures to come. Aw, <laughs> that was really cute. We've also got a $15 donation from Pause E, who says, watching ATDQ for many years now. Keep up the great work. Greetings from Switzerland, and thank you for making my time at home after a surgery much more enjoyable. Smiley face. <laughs> We've got a $25 donation from Aria Rhapsody. He says, as someone who has a brain tumor, the word cancer is a very scary and real thing for me. 
Everything you guys do is beyond amazing. I can't afford much in donations, but I want to show support. Keep up the amazing work. Much love. All right, guys, let's get some hype for Pop Squidward and the Majora's Mask Run! Best of luck to you. Wow. Oh, my. Wow, wow. <laughs> so how's everybody doing today? I hope we're all doing great. Um, I guess we're just going to count down. We good? Yes? Okay, three, two, one, go. Woo! Let's get it! Wait. <laughs> Are we good?